Welcome to the Theresian Military Academy in Austria. I'm Karl Markus Reisner and today in a new video we would like to give you an overview about the situation of the delivery of heavy weapon systems into Ukraine. First of all, we have to understand that modern armed forces have to fulfill a certain amount of capabilities to be successful in combat. For example, the ability to engage or the ability to command troops. So either all of these capabilities are available and you are successful or not and then you will fail. When we now have a look at the different services of the Ukrainian armed forces, then you can see that all these capabilities are more or less depicted in all these different services. We will have a look today at the ground forces of Ukraine. The ground forces of Ukraine, as you can see here in this map, are more or less dispersed all over the country. The main bulk of the land forces are present in the area of Donbass and along the front line till Kherson. When we have a look at the equipment, then it's interesting to note that on the 24th of February there was a huge number of different equipment available in the Ukrainian armed forces. So there were about 2,400 tanks and armored vehicles, about 1,500 field artillery pieces and mortars and over 500 multiple rocket launch systems. This equipment and the personnel form the brigades. The brigade is the core element of the Ukrainian land forces. There are mountain brigades, motorized brigades, mechanized brigades, tank brigades and even artillery brigades. Just to give you an idea how many brigades are available, the Ukrainian land forces have two tank brigades, active and four in reserve, plus one individual tank battalion. It is important to know that to fulfill their task, they need certain enablers, which actually are needed on the battlefield to fight against the enemy. Important is to understand that, for example, anti-aircraft assets are very important, because without anti-aircraft assets, the mechanized or motorized brigades will not be able to attack successfully against the enemy. When we have a look at the last three months of the conflict, then we can see that three certain elements had a positive effect on the capabilities. First, it was the tactics. Second, it was the weapons delivered by the West, especially anti-tank weapons and anti-aircraft weapons. And third, it was the amount of intelligence delivered by US and NATO. All these three elements had a positive effect on core capabilities, like engage or inform. So let us now have a look at the capability engage, especially when it comes to heavy weapon systems. So we will have a look now on the situation, how many weapon systems were already delivered and what kind of effect they already have on the battlefield. The first important equipment is tanks, armor. So we know already that the Czech Republic, Poland and Bulgaria delivered tanks of the type T-72, altogether about 100 pieces. That means these 100 pieces would form a minus tank brigade. The next uh, important equipment is uh, also armor. It's the uh, armored personal carrier or the armored fighting vehicle. Also here we know that the Czech Republic, Poland, the Netherlands and Lithuania delivered already systems. Altogether, again, about 120 to 140 pieces. So that means the equipment of two battalions in a minus mechanized brigade. So let us look at artillery. First, towed artillery. We know that Estonia, Italy delivered already systems and we also know that Bulgaria and Estonia delivered some old Soviet origin systems. The most important piece was of course the M777, which was delivered by Australia, United States and Canada. All together, again, about 120 pieces, which would possibly form one minus artillery brigade. How is the situation when it comes to self-propelled artillery? Here we have uh, the M109 system delivered by Norwegian armed forces and by uh, Poland. And we also have uh, Czech systems, a modern one and an old one, still from the Soviet times. And the most important equipment was delivered by the French, the Caesar system, 12 pieces. Why it was uh, so important? Because this system 
has the capability to fire to a range up to 40 kilometers. Altogether, also the equipment to form a miners artillery brigade. To give you an idea about the employment of such a system, we would like to show you a short video about the employment of the Caesar system. The next piece of equipment which is important when it comes to artillery is multi-launch rocket systems. We know that for the moment only the Czech Republic has delivered 20 pieces of the RM-70 and Poland has delivered 20 BM-21. So altogether only 40 pieces. Also with a limited range because those systems are still using all Soviet style ammunition. When we have a look at the multi-launch rocket systems which are promised from the West, then of course it is significant to note that there will be a delivery of HIMARS systems and MLRS systems. So United States promised to deliver four pieces and Germany and Great Britain promised to deliver seven pieces. These low numbers should make you see that there will be a delivery, but there will be no significant effect on the battlefield in the near or mid term. Why is artillery so important? It's always about distances and ammunition. So distances, important is to see that the delivered systems like the Panzerhaubitze 2000 or even the Caesar system are the first systems with a range greater than the Russian systems. And the same when you look at the multiple launch rocket systems. So let us have a look at the needs of the Ukrainian side. So one advisor of the president just recently said on the 13th of June that they need 1,000 howitzers, 300 multi-launch rocket systems, 500 tanks and 2,000 armored vehicles. So you can see the amount of equipment which has been delivered already is quite low compared to the numbers which are needed by the Ukrainian side. It is important to understand that the Ukrainian side are facing two strategic dilemmata. The first dilemma is as follows. We know that from the 24th of February, pretty much on a daily basis, there are attacks by Russian long-range precision fires onto Ukraine territory. So either it's Iskander rockets or cruise missiles, which are used against uh, the Ukrainian armed forces. So we know that the deliveries already reinforced certain capabilities like inform and engage. But the problem is that certain other capabilities, which are always important, like protect, are not fulfilled. So that means we have a gap here. And the problem is that as long as you have no functioning air defense system, this situation will not change in the favor of the Ukrainian side. Very, very seldomly we see Ukrainian air defense systems at work, like in this short video showing a S-300 system operated by the Ukrainian forces in uh, the Donbass area. So the challenge is the weapon systems which are delivered into Ukraine are very often also targeted by the Russian side. Like we can see here with this M777 battery targeted by Russian uh, artillery and loitering munition and one destroyed M777 piece. So as long as the Ukrainian side is not able to effective to stop this, there will be no positive effect on the battlefield when it comes to the deployment of heavy weapons. The next challenge is that there is the fear or the threat that certain weapon systems are captured by the Russian side. This happens from time to time. As you can see here in the following video, which shows Russian soldiers operating Western delivered anti-tank weapons like the Javelins. The second dilemma is how to use the delivered weapons. So we know, for example, that the Germans will deliver 7 to 11 pieces of the Panzerbitze 2000 at the end of June. We also know that, for example, from the Czech side, about 20 pieces of this old 2S1 system were already delivered. But those are not big numbers. So the question is, when those systems are coming in, is it better to wait to have them all together and then attack or to send them directly to the front lines. Therefore, I have prepared two sketches for you. The first sketch should show you the question 
When those systems are coming in, would it be better to hold them back in the rear of the front and to prepare them for a massive counterattack against the Russians, like for example here in Kherson, or in Kharkiv, or in Donbass? Or is it the case, like it looks like at the moment, that all the weapon systems which were coming in are delivered immediately to the front lines, where they are used more or less piecemeal? A good example for the employment of the heavy weapon systems delivered to Ukraine in a piecemeal fashion is the recent counterattack of Ukrainian forces at Kherson. A battalion-sized battle group of the Ukrainian side crossed the river and tried to split apart the Russian forces in that area. The problem was that without air superiority and without sufficient artillery support, the Ukrainian forces were encircled and disrupted and probably destroyed. Also here we would like to show you a short video which show the staging of these forces prior to the attack at Kherson area. So we know already that the European Union, but also the United States and other nations already have started to deliver weapons to Ukraine. The question is, will these weapons come in time and what kind of effect will they have on the battlefield? By showing you this last picture, I would like to point to the question that it is not only about weapon deliveries, but it's also about training and of course sustainment when it comes to ammunition. This picture shows the training of Ukrainian artillerymen on the Norwegian delivered M109 system. So the question is, how sufficient is the training? Is the ammunition available? Is uh, maintenance available to maintain the system on the battlefield over a long time? That concludes our briefing for today. Thank you for listening. See you next time.